The first thing I like to do is make sure all the voters are spinning in the right direction, and if they're not, I'll hook the quad up to DL Heli, and I'll reverse that individual ESC. Alright, with the flight control, the first thing I'm going to do is flash into the latest beta flight hex file. For this, I tried to use the latest Omnibus F4 firmware, but I actually had a problem with it. I couldn't get my serial, um, serial RX to work with my Spectrum receiver, so um, I looked around on the forum and found a guy who had an updated hex file, and I used that, and it actually solved my problems. I'm going to link it below. Once I get a flash, I'm going to get my ports set up how I want. Uh, in this particular case, if you're going to be using the Lemon RX or um, a satellite receiver, you want to have Serial RX uh, turned on on UART1 like I have here. Once I have that set up, I can go to the Configuration tab. I can turn on RX Serial, set it to Spectrum 2048, and then at that point, my receiver input should be coming into the receiver tab. When I'm testing these boards, I like to keep a lot of the features turned on. So you can see I've got accelerometer and barometer turned on. On the configuration tab, I'm also going to turn on black box, air mode, and OSD. The next thing I'm going to do is calibrate the motors. Please make sure you have your props off for this. I'm going to check this, crank it to 100%, and then plug in your battery. Your ESCs will do the chime, and then drop the power back to zero, and then let it finish the chime, and then pull off the battery. At that point, they've been cali calibrated. I do this without having first changed the maximum throttle, so it's normally set to 2000. So I'll calibrate it to 2000 and I'll drop it to 1990 to get rid of that dead zone at the top of the uh, top of the curve. As far as the pin tuning goes, I just went with the stock pins. This is an X frame, and I think that the latest beta flight uh, by with the default pins, I think it flies pretty damn good. The only thing I'm going to change is that I'm going to turn the super rate up and the RC rate down, and that's just because I like the curves to be a lot more flat in the middle. On the receiver tab, I also turn up the RC deadband and the all deadband to uh, 6 and 12, respectively. As far as modes go, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on a beeper, and then I also put on, turn on the arm switch. So just like the last Omnibus flight controller, uh, the OSD works just the same. If you've got your quad plugged in and transmitting, uh, you, you can pretty much see in real time uh, how the OSD is going to look. So you can go in here and flip these toggles and see it update. For the warehouse video that I'm going to link, uh, these are the settings that I use for that. Um, I, it was pretty cool to have the, uh, the barometer on. And, uh, and get to see like as I'm flying inside how high off the ground that I am. One of the problems I noticed during the video is that the OSD would turn off. Uh, I think that was because the CPU is getting overloaded and it, and it turns the OSD off as a failsafe. Uh, if somebody knows why that's happening and, I, and I'm incorrect on that, please throw it in the comments below. I'm going to try turning some of this stuff off and see if the, uh, the OSD issue goes away. Alright, so the first thing I did was take this quad to a warehouse fun fly. I had never flown in this building before, so I'll be honest, I didn't push it too hard. I'm hoping to get back in there with a little more confidence and I can start ramping up the camera angle and seeing how the build holds up. My initial thoughts though were that the quad felt super locked in. Quick turns, flips and rolls stopped and started on a dime and all felt snappy. I'd anticipated that this would fly well but I didn't expect it to feel like a full size quad. Running 3 inch tri-blades, Sunny Sky 1406 4000 kV motors, and Glacier Ice 75C 1054S batteries, this thing definitely felt full size. You'll notice the OSD goes in and out and that's the issue I mentioned earlier. If anyone knows for sure what causes this, please throw it in the comments below because I really want to get to the bottom of it. I was able to get outside and push things a little harder. As you can see from the picture, I strapped on a GoPro which adds another 96 grams of weight hanging off the top. This build is 298 grams all up weight. The GoPro and case are nearly 100 grams. So with an additional 32% more weight, the quad didn't feel so locked in or snappy, which was expected. If I plan to fly it full time with a GoPro, I definitely want to retain. Overall though, I'm very happy with this build. With the powerful Sunny Sky 4000 KV motors, the Glacier Ice 75C battery, the HS1177 cam, and the Omnibus F4 Pro, which is jam-packed with features, I feel like I'm able to get the features and feel of a full-size quad, but in a package and profile that I can fly indoors or around my small backyard. This is definitely going to be my quad this winter for our indoor race series. I hope you've enjoyed this build video. If you did, please support me by liking and subscribing, and feel free to ask questions in the comments below. Thanks.